Welcome, 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 yes! Welcome to another episode of This Is Your Life. This is the show where we take you, the audience, and one unbeknown guest through their life. So sit back, relax, and join us as we take a trip down memory lane and pay a number of special guests a surprise visit. I am so excited for tonight's show. So let's just get straight into it. Today's guest is 30 years old today, but what is more, he has the most bizarre love for Blue WKD. He also thought that cyclists were actually called bikelists. And here's the big one. He thought that he once paid national insurance because he had a dangerous job. <laughs> it gives me the greatest of pleasures to say, Tom Buckley, this is your life. Where best to start this trip down memory lane than at the very beginning? Tom Buckley was born on February 5th, 1991, and spent the early years of his life residing in the small village of Glen Conway. So that's where we're going to head to first to begin this trip down memory lane. Glan Conway is a small town sitting across the estuary of the River Conway and is home to some majestic businesses such as Nev's Garage, What You Like, and that's about it really. In 2001, the population of Glan Conway was just 2,290 people, but by the time of the 2011 census, the population had reduced to just over 2,000. I think we can safely affirm that this was because of Tom Buckley's teenage years. But let's speak to the people who can tell us about Tom's early years. So how did you feel when Tom was born? It was all right, really. Just like another day. I was trying to get my double glazed windows fitted, wasn't I? Yeah. And me, it disrupted that thinking job I was on in the farm, didn't it? Had to come away from there early. Lost money on that one. <laughs> it was quite embarrassing, to be honest. Even on the day that he was born, um, he ruined my fir fourth birthday party. And I had to have a cake with a mermaid on it that had like the biggest boobs you've ever seen. So that was quite embarrassing in front of all my friends and the four year old. So growing up with Teed, uh, there's only about uh, six months between us. Uh, he was like a big brother to me. Uh, you know, the type of person you'd think that he'd always look after you, always protect you, being me being the baby out of the family. And that's what I always thought until we were probably about seven and we were uh, having a day at Auntie Sue's and we were playing with the new golf set, uh, you know, practicing a bit of putting. We're at the top of the uh, top of the drive and uh, we're having a great time. And then uh, TD decided to absolutely smash the golf ball at Auntie Sue's house and it broke a window. Auntie Sue obviously didn't wrap too well at that point because it was a broken window and immediately TD decided to blame me. I was nowhere near the golf set when it hit the window. It was not my hit, it was T's. But TD, like butter wouldn't melt, told everybody that it was me that had uh, swung the golf ball at the house. Um, I got in loads of trouble and Sue wasn't best pleased, nor was my mum actually. And everyone was pretty annoyed at me and didn't believe my side of the story uh, until many years later when TD, when we were about 18, decided to actually fess up the secret he had been holding on to for about 10 years uh, and told everybody the truth. Um, so yeah, TD, thanks so much for protecting your little baby cousin. Not... As his parents, how would you summarise Tom's childhood? We had a lot of concerns. Well, it all started when he, we found him sucking labels on women's bras in Marks and Spencers. Um, and then Eddie worked out, found out that, oh no, we better get him out of here quickly. But then she did think, of course, that he was gay. <laughs> um, and, her thoughts, you know. and the time he saw a dwarf in Marks. 
yeah. We okay. had to get him out pretty quick then. He was obsessed with dwarfs. So that would explain the midget porn <laughs> and the need to be breastfed during his teenage years as well. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the next phase of his life, Tom attended primary school at Uskol Glan Conway. But we're going to pick things up seven years later where he began his journey through secondary school. Uskol Abba Conway is a medium sized school situated just outside the castle town of Conway. Tom attended here between the years of 2002 to 2009. Usko Abercombe pride themselves on having the highest expectations for all their pupils and really aim to create a clear picture of what the future may hold for each student. This includes leading people to do a drumming course at Liverpool Community College in order to set themselves up for a future in the craning industry. Tom had many great memories at Usko Abercombe and really used as a platform to explore himself and ultimately find himself. Let's go speak to people who shared in that time with him and can hear what he was really like. Well, on his inset day at school, he was sick on the school bus when we got to Tyler Cabin. So we still had all the way through Rowan and Henry with my little brother with sick all over his trousers. So I had to ring my mum to get him some new trousers. He didn't own another pair of trousers, so we had to wear shorts. So got to school, had to walk this child through school with sick on him, get his trousers changed, wear shorts all day, and people go to me, is your brother the one that looks like a weird German child? Like, yes, yes, that's my brother, yeah. Hello, Tom. Hello. 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 Tom in school. Eh, it's fair to say he wasn't the fizziest drink in the fridge. But I do remember a teacher offering him words of encouragement one time. He said, Tom, it's not that you're stupid. It's just you're constantly unlucky every time you try thinking. Are we rolling? Okay. Oh, Tom Buckley. What can I say? I'd, I've known him for a very long time. Uh, we first met at Cubs where um, he introduced himself as the, as the Glen Conway Giraffe. <laughs> I thought, wow, what a presence. You know, really made an impression. Then he started eating the leaves off the tree off the back. It was, it was a bit odd. Um, we've grown, we've grown up doing a lot of things together, you know. We, we went to scouts, went to the same school, had sex, even playing for the same football team. He was the damn best corner flag we had ever seen. No one could do it better. One time the goal um, post got broken as well, and um, he had to stand in and play the post as well. He was really good at it. It was incredible. I've never seen anyone do it better than him. And you know what? He's he's truly done well for himself, you know, working for his dad. Although I do find it incredibly ironic that a man as tall as him needs to operate a crane when he could probably just reach those heights just by standing on his tiptoes. I think um, I think one of my fondest memories of Tom was in Cornwall. You know, we were in the pub. He just finished down in his last 13th pint of Cornish Rattler. He stood up in the crowd and he called out the biggest lad in the club. Unfortunately, um, he, he was the biggest lad in the club and he ended up fighting himself and losing. But, you know, he's he's one of the nicest, nicest lads I know. And it's um, it's a real shame he's gone from this world. What? Oh, he's, he's not dead. It's his birthday. Cut, cut that out. Yeah, he was a bit, a bit weird in school. I remember... Um... I remember being in, playing, I think we were playing five a side or something like that, and it was, we went into the, sh yeah, we finished five a side, I had a bit of a laugh with the lads, and he, I always used to take a shower after, you know, there's plenty of showers there, about eight showers, something like that, so, but I remember going in, I was one of the only ones, really, went for a shower, and he ended up coming right next to me in the shower, and I sort of thought after that, I thought, what, I was a bit worried about him, but wasn't he the first person to become gender neutral in school? I'm sure he was. And now that Tom had found himself and established himself as the first gender fluid person in North Wales, it was time for Tom to find love. And that's exactly what happened in December 2011 when a certain special person came into his life named Louisa. Back in 2012, Tom met Louisa online at www.afghanigirls.com. 
Luisa spent her childhood growing up in the mountains of Kabul, Afghanistan, and following a trade deal with Afzal, Tom was able to swap some crane services in order to have Luisa trafficked over to the UK. Let's hear from Luisa herself how the story began. We didn't actually really meet, to be honest, because a text message was enough really to put me off. When I say a text message, I mean a good 20 text messages a day, all basically saying the same thing. So that he'd say, how are you? I wouldn't reply. How are you? I wouldn't reply. I'm busy, are you? I wouldn't reply. He actually asked me to go see the Harry Potter film with him about five times. No. It got to the point where I felt so pestered, I literally just had to say, please, please stop texting me. I don't like you that way, I'm sorry. <sighs> Young love, you love to see it. Really does warm your heart. And speaking of love, on the other side of the family, another love story had just begun. Ellie had met her future husband, Pierre. And so let's go and speak to Pierre about his experiences of Tom. You know, I was looking forward to having a brother-in-law. But Tom, I thought we'd be able to go and play football with him and then maybe we would go and grab a beer together. Tom is just 30. Yeah, I just feel the need to interject here. These Italians are so difficult to understand. He said Tom is 30. He didn't say Tom is dirty. Sorry, carry on, Pierre. He's already got a hole in his heart, a broken ankle, and he's the biggest lightweight I've ever met. Is it me or does Tom sound like all the Wizard of Oz characters amalgamated into one person? And I feel as if the lightweight narrative is a really fitting way to bring us to the present day. And I hear you ask, what is Tom like today? What has all that past built? What fine specimen? And so let's go and find out. How would I describe Tom today? That's a good question. Well, the obvious answer is he's still an idiot. Nothing's changed in the whole time I've known him. But the main thing I think about is how on earth has he got a wife? Because, and I'm led to believe, they never actually went out in the first place. You know, when amongst all the lads, we just assumed she was in it for a bet or, you know, just a bit of a prank. And, you know, we were quite happy to go along with that. So, you know, you can imagine, not only my surprise, but everybody's on the wedding day when she turned up and, and actually went through with it. What do I think of Buckley? He's an idiot. I absolutely hate the lad. Do you know that when I first moved into my house, right, he called my brother a scruff. He's just a, an idiot, that's all I can say. What's Buckley like in the present day? Well, I'll tell you, that guy, from bike lists to that dodgy bottle of orangey brown liquid that he drank in Nuki, you just don't know what's coming next. But to be fair to the guy, you know, if you do ever have a crash, he can get you a great deal on a scrappage scheme, so that's the time to give Buckley a call. Although, you know, should he be operating heavy, heavy machinery on a daily basis? Phew, I'm not too sure, but I'll let you be the judge. That's a quite a um, difficult question to answer that one, because we don't, don't actually see Tom much these days. Um, it's well documented that he was a, he was a mummy's boy, and that's carried on in married life. He stepped out of the wing of his mother, and into the, under the wing, I should say, of his wife. Um, we were in Hamburg a few years ago, been in the country 16 hours. And uh, he's on the phone, I miss you, I miss you, I wanna come home, wanna come home. Next thing you know, floods of tears, sobbing. Uh, he's on Sky Scanner, looking for flights home. Risa, I miss you, I wanna get home, wanna get home. Um, and it took Joel probably three hours to, to talk him down and keep him from a uh, boarding the flight home. Uh, it's that bad that even um, we're all taking bets whether he'd show up for his own stag do. Unfortunately, he did He did show up that weekend. Um, but the less said about that, the better. I'd hate to incriminate the lad. How is he as a husband? Well, I would be majorly disappointed if I was not nominated for Pride of Britain Award or Carer of the Year Award, as it's coming up to 10 years together this year. In our vows, we said in sickness and in health, and it's been mostly sickness. Two broken ankles, always something wrong with him. 
if I've got a headache one day, he'll have a migraine. If I've stubbed my toe, he'll say he's nearly broken his toe. You get the gist. But I suppose every five foot five woman needs someone to change the light bulb every now and then. So that brings us to the current day, ladies and gents, and the end of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you've enjoyed this very special episode. All that remains to be said is the biggest happy birthday to the kindest, funniest clown that I know. And I hope you enjoy the following reel. Happy 30th birthday, you old man. Everything that I've said in this video is mostly true, but a bit more dramatic. But just to let you know that I do love you so, so much. And I'm already crying just saying it on video, but I couldn't have asked to be a better or kinder man. And I love you so, so, so much. And I really, really hope that I've still managed to make your day special because you deserve the world. And I love you. Well, nearly it's happy birthday, TD. No problem. Don't, don't worry about the other half of the video. That's all there. Uh... You know, that's all made up for the show, for the people, isn't it? You know, just like the soaps that you like watching. <laughs> Happy birthday, sausage! Mummy loves you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday, birthday Tom. Tom. Have Goody. a good one. Hey TD, happy birthday you old git from over here in Manchester. Hope you have a good day. Happy birthday Teed, can't believe you are 33. Oh, you are so old. Get the wrinkle cream on, can't wait to celebrate with you soon. Lots of love. Can't wait to see you soon bro, take care. Happy birthday Teed, I hope you have a great 30th. Can't wait for the party. Happy birthday. 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 Have a good one. Hope you have a good 30th birthday in lockdown. Dad's put some nice music on for you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Hi, Tom. Just want to say, I'm sorry we can't be with you for your 30th birthday. Can't believe where the time has gone. Um, just wanted to raise a glass and say, happy birthday. Happy birthday. And say... Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. Cheers. <laughs> Happy birthday, mate. I hope you enjoyed and look forward to celebrating your 30th birthday very soon. Happy birthday, Buckley. I know you weren't looking at my ass in the shower. Have a good one, mate. <laughs> Happy 30th, Bucko. Looking forward to watching you nurse a couple of ciders when we're out with the lads soon, mate. Happy birthday, Tom. Big happy 3 0. Can't wait to come back down to Wales and, you know, have a few scoops of cider with you and get absolutely mullered. <laughs> Love you, mate. Speak soon. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, Tommy Buckley. Have a great day, mate. Plenty of ciders and plenty of. Chucky dies from our race. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday, Bucko. Happy 30th, mate. Hope you have a good day. Looking forward to celebrating properly in the summer, mate. See ya. Happy birthday, Bucko. Hope you have a wonderful day, mate. Hopefully we can raise a glass soon. And who knows, there's Premier League champions. Happy birthday, Bucko. Sorry it's in lockdown, mate. Uh, but we'll make up for it when we're out of this, finally. Miss seeing all the lads, beers, lads. Reminiscent of the old uh, Ben Adorn stag do. Have a good day, mate. Yeah, Tom's so great. Happy birthday, Tom. Love you so much, Tom. If only they knew the truth. I'll expose him this year.